industrial systems engineering and currently pursuing an internship at HUL. Thank you, Nisara. Our second panelist for the discussion is Ms. Cherry Telly, who has secured an internship at APT. Cherry, I request you to introduce yourself. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Cherry Tali. I have just finished my third year of engineering at IIT Kharagpur in instrumentation branch and I'm currently interning at PNG. Thank you, Cherry. Our third panelist for the discussion is Mr. Jyoti Aditya, who has secured an internship at ITC. Jyoti Aditya, would you please give us a strong, short introduction? Uh, yeah, sure. Hi, uh, I am Jyoti Aditya. Uh, I am a third year and I have completed my third year. I'm chemical engineering and I'm currently interning at ITC. Thank you, Jyoti Aditya. We would first like to congratulate all of you for your amazing accomplishment. We are looking forward to learning a lot from you. OK, let's move on to our first question. An internship provides us with work experience that helps us as a student to put our knowledge into practice and develop professional skills. Hence, it is important to choose the companies wisely. Here. When we have multiple companies recruiting interns, how do we prioritize them? Nasira, could you please give us a brief idea on how to carry it out? Um, sure. I think when it comes to prioritizing companies, it differs from person to person in terms of what they're looking to get out of an internship, right? Um, so I think that is uh, first and foremost the factor that needs to be considered by anyone when you're or uh, let's say you have multiple um, shortlists at hand and you have to prioritize companies. And uh, number two is, I think uh, another factor that plays into this is also your career aspirations after graduation um, or you know placement aspirations as well. And how this internship aligns with giving you that background to pursue, let's say, uh, I mean, it could be anything, right? You could be wanting to go for higher studies or wanting to sit for campus placements or uh, you know, any 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 stream that you want to go to, how does this profile or company align with that? And I think that's a good place to start in terms of how to prioritize companies. And but beyond this, I would say it's completely up to the person in terms of um, you know their preferences. If I um, if if it if it gives more clarity, I can give an example of how I prioritized last year. Um, so I. I was specifically looking for something um, on ground, you know, I wanted to work on site, get this um, sort of um, experience on a manufacturing side of things. And I think that sort of pushed me towards prioritizing um, FMCG above all the other shortlists that I had, um, especially because during the pandemic, um, all of the internships we had done was virtual. And so I was sort of craving for like an on ground internship where I can interact with people and uh, you know, see exactly how things are done on ground because anything that you study, um, once you have to apply it in practice, it it becomes a lot harder. And uh, something that definitely is um, challenging is like a you know FMCG environment, uh, especially in the factory setting. So if I was going to get that sort of opportunity in um, an internship, I really wanted to prioritize that above others because not every day do you get to see something like that. So that that was um, from a personal perspective. So like I said, um, you know, it's it's up to the student what their aspirations are. And I think that's how they should prioritize the companies. Uh, maybe other panelists can add to this. Yeah, yeah I, I would like to. OK, Cherry, go ahead. OK, thank you. So uh, I wanted to add how I prioritized companies uh, last year. What happened for me was I was not very sure of which profile or field I want to uh, work in. So what I did was I started out with all the companies, all the profiles. I kept them in mind and sort of filtered them out based on my skill set and uh, my abilities and what I wanted. Basically what the approach what Nesra said and uh, then finally decided on uh, going for an FMCG or PNG. Yeah, yeah, Jyotir Aditya, please continue. Um, yeah, so I would like to reiterate the point made by Nisra. So it should be just differing from individual. So I would be prioritizing based on the work-life balance as of now. So since it is an internship, it won't matter that much during the two months. But if you're planning to come up and held on to that, that same opportunity or the same industry that you are trying to apply for your placement or you're wishing for a PPO, 
then you should be looking on these factors as well that would include your future plans what if you want to pursue higher studies or how the company and the project align with your cv that would be helpful for your placements or let's say the sectors that you are wishing to work upon also the pay scale also matters we don't actually emphasize that on much but most of us have that at the back of our mind so that is also an important aspect uh, while deciding upon some profiles i i think i just um, want to add another point here so this is where uh, i think jyotira aditya made a good point about understanding exactly what the company has to offer before you uh, make a list of them and start to prioritize right so this is where i think um, talking to people who have pursued those internships in the past helps a lot i would personally push all of um, you to you know um, actively approach your seniors get first hand exp you know sort of hearing about exactly how their internship went and go go into those interactions with a fixed set of questions that you want to get answered about uh, each company and uh, you know uh, so because it varies from person to person making that informed choice is very important even while deciding the profile or the company so um i would just push everyone to be you know sort of not hesitant to approach seniors and um get feedback on how their inter- internships has been because not everything is a cakewalk or a very good experience right everyone will have certain upsides and downsides to what their internship experience was and i think you know something that could have been an upside for someone else could be a disadvantage for you it might not be the thing you're looking for uh, or the opposite if something was a disadvantage to someone else it could be something that is exactly what you're looking for from an internship so having that information and then making choices based on that is i think uh, ultimately what will be helpful for uh, everyone Yeah, thank you, panelists. I think we can move on to our next question now. There's always a doubt about the selection procedure for the companies that offer internship, which make their process a bit daunting for students. So, could you please highlight any generalized selection procedure for the same? Cherry, would you like to begin on this one? Sure. Uh, I can give you the selection procedure for PNG, a high level view. And if you want me to dive into a uh, deep dive into something, you can let me know. so the process was first we had an iq test online followed by a online personality test these were mostly questions um for iq test these were different sort of questions than the usual iq test that we give online so you have to remember patterns you have to solve some puzzles on the spot things like that and uh, for personality test uh, some quite you had to answer like there were 100 questions or so and you had to a uh, respond basis on what how much you relate to that particular situation and after those tests and based on our cvs we were shortlisted we had a group discussion and followed by in uh, day one interview and yeah that was the selection procedure if you want me to deep dive into something let me know sure we can first check with other panelists so sure. jyoti raditya would you like to add something on okay, so i would be telling about uh, the selection procedure at itc so again most of the let's say most of the companies that come for uh, supply chain there are majorly which you will like itc and png that come at the campus so all of them have a basic resume shortlisting and a basic like pre interview kind of test or a form based selection and then this is followed by group discussions and then we have the technical and hr round so for itc uh, what was the case is they gave us a kites form so basically the summer internship program at itc is known as kites so they gave us a form which we have to fill and submit and based on that they shortlist us for the group discussion round and in the group discussion round we are given a case study which we have to Uh, either counter or in support of that and then we are selected for the day one interview and it's the same first followed by tech round and then we have the hr round that was the case at it okay that's nice and what about nesara what was your experience right um i'll give a brief about what the process looked like for hul um as uh, jyotiraditya said uh, i think resume shortlisting is something very basic for all of these forms and along with that similarly even hul had a questionnaire that we had to submit 
uh, before proceeding with further rounds and um, something i would like to highlight in terms of general selection process for fmcg companies is they have um, certain personality types and uh, that they look for that particularly aligns with their company culture because these companies are um they come from you know they're they're built from manufacturing at its core right uh, these are companies that manufacture their products and a lot of these um have strong culture built into them uh, right from bottom up even your corporate leaders in these companies are people who have worked in factories they know exactly how things work on ground so there is like a culture that's developed in each of these companies and if you don't fit well with that culture they don't see you as a good fit for the company you know the, that sort of personality you being able to um fit well with their culture and if i have to highlight this could vary from again company to company someone who's a good fit for png might not be a good fit for hul something like that but i think in general certain characteristics that they look for is good communication um hard working being able to pick up um things very quickly because the learning curve is pretty steep during the internship and i think um the ability to take ownership of your work and being resilient and getting it done so these are i think general characters uh, especially in fmcg that is uh, you know appreciated so in the questionnaire also for hul um the questions might look very simple but i would highly recommend you customizing your answers so that they highlight these characters from your personality okay so for example if you are talking about extracurriculars you would want to sort of highlight some experience that shows that you are a good communicator or you're a good um, team leader um, so so use every question wisely that way and i would not i would highly suggest not to fake answers or take answers from your seniors and try to modify it and submit that is something you should not be doing they look for authenticity as well the more authentic you are the more uh, yourself you are in these questionnaires the higher are your chances and um, so i think that is something that should be kept in mind then you move on to the um, so once the form and um, cv shortlisting was done um, you we got an inter- uh, link to a video interview it was on like an automated um, hiring platform where we were given three questions uh, and uh, 30 seconds to prepare for it and we had to answer it in 3 minutes so these were supply chain based questions uh, basic supply chain knowledge and i think what they wanted to test in this stage was um, structured thinking so because you have very less time how quickly are you able to uh, break down the problem and prioritize your um, there could be multiple factors to take into consideration how are you prioritizing it and finally arriving at some sort of recommendations for that particular question so after this uh, the final shortlist for day 1 was released uh, five people were shortlisted and uh, it was just one round of interview on day 1 which had both technical and hr aspects to it and yeah that was about it for hul yeah so cherry anything left which you want to add to this uh yeah i wanted to add uh, especially for png when you have the personality test right uh, you will be given a lot of questions and you will have to uh, choose whatever you relate to and what you not relate to on a 0 to 5 mcq scale so it's important that you are consistent with your answers here because uh, they and this question could be reframed and asked again at a later stage and if your answers don't match then there the, there lies the issue so uh, be honest and consistent with your answers that was very insightful insightful from all three of you so moving on okay so moving on to the next question as a recruiter is only given 7 seconds to look at a cv what can someone make uh, someone do to make sure that the cv gets selected um and also what are the additional things that we should take care of jodhir aditya would you like to begin okay so the very basic aspects of building up a cv uh, like everyone would know or should be knowing while making your cvs on the erp portal a uh, few basic things that put on your academic achievements or the thing that you think are of more importance at the top after the academic qualification so in case of fmcg firms i would say the shortlisting criteria primarily based around cgpa and the academic achievements or the uh, if you have any course pro- projects that you have done or under a pro- uh, professors uh, in your department respective departments that's all they look for and apart from that those resumes should be not faking about you 
like you shouldn't be faking things in your resume since it would be asked at a later stage let's say in your interview and if you fail to answer that that would leave a bad impression on the interviewer so in the case of itc what happens is you are given a kite form so that is considered during your interviews that is considered as your resume during your interviews so they would be asking some basic personality traits based or some thinking based questions uh, i would mention some like what are your short term and long term objectives uh, what do you think is your most significant achievement so be try uh, try to be crisp and clear about your answers regarding this and try to be real as much as possible since in your interviews it will be very helpful to build up on these points if you know what you are saying right so that's it i guess for other panelists may add to it Oh, I think the single biggest word that these CVs can be summarized to is uh, impact. So FMCG firms are looking for what kind of impact you had through all your experiences, whether it be internships or projects or PORs or extracurricular activities. So make sure that uh, whatever work you have done and whatever impact of that work has been is highlighted in your CV. Bold that particular stuff. Use action verbs. um and having a uh, an awards and achievement section is a plus so that is basically it and try to be as honest as possible with your cv and uh, uh pr- keep the awards and achievement section if you have at the top or uh, anything uh, extraordinary which you have achieved uh, can be put in the extracurricular section if it's extracurricular and if it's academic related uh, in the top section Sarah, think, um, like yeah, I think both of them have covered a lot of um, good points that way. Um, FMCG and consult CVs are very similar in that aspect that you need to highlight the impact that you're going to create. Um, I I realized that now more during the internship than I did earlier uh, during the interviews itself. That you know they are looking for people who can make a dent in their business, however small that is. Um, that is especially expected out of an FMCG intern. so they want to look that look at that qualities you know in in a person cv so any 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 project that you've done you have to quantify it you have to um you know use action verbs like cherry said you um, cannot you know downplay whatever you've done just just get straight to the point and tell exactly what sort of change it brought to the project or how we contributed so um that is that is one thing and um in terms of awards and also also how you stood out in each of these things right if you received some sort of special recognition or uh, how how if if yours was the first of its kind or anything of that sort you need to mention it because like i said uh, unlike other profiles fmcg is unique in a way that um, you don't get a lot of uh, fmcg opportunities before cdc itself so you don't um, anyone who is probably sitting for fmcg has not seen an fmcg intern before they haven't experienced something similar to that so how do they evaluate a person like that um the best thing they can count on is that the student has the capability to pick up what we have to offer very quickly in that short span of 2 months right so how do they evaluate that um by your academic caliber your extracurricular caliber and uh, what sort of achievements have you always managed to stand out in the things that you've done so it's important to highlight these things um for fmcg profile in in the cv and other other things are just basic um cv building tips that i don't think should be getting into right now in terms of details i think that is another session altogether about um you know basics of building a cv but if you have to look at for essentialities of a good fmcg profile this would be it yeah yeah that was very insightful but any of the panelists like to add something else or should we move on so i think we can move on so last minute strategies are critical and students are extremely stressed about this time so what are your recommendation for dealing with this last minute anxiousness so nesara would you like to go on first yeah uh, you can hear me right yeah yeah okay sorry i had a little issue so um last moment preparation strategies um if i have to speak from hrl's perspective uh, i would highly recommend people to learn the basics of case solving 
because especially the video interview um, where I said they test your structure, structured thinking abilities, um, case solving helps a lot. Um, so what do I mean by case solving? Um, if for you know people who are not familiar with it, is you are presented with a business problem, and um, you get to decide how you solve it, right? So and with with limited set of information. So how, in that case, how would you approach it in the most structured way possible? That you don't you arrive at the optimal solution with you know minimized efforts. You obviously don't want to beat around the bush and arrive at the solution. So that is what structured thinking means. And they test this you know in the video interview as well uh, during HUL um, selection process. And I think going through basics of that and just knowing exactly how to uh, break down a problem into what we call the MISI structure that is mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. Uh, you know, uh, that sort of what, what I mean by that is you break it down into parts that are, you know, they cover everything. But when looked at each group separately, they're um, mutually exclusive. They're not overlapping. OK, um, uh, people can go look it up later on uh, exactly how case solving works. But knowing the basics of, of that really helps you structure your thoughts in that 30 seconds when you're trying to uh, come up with an answer that you, that you explain in like three minutes. Um, that is that is one essential tip I highly recommend people to um, do before CDC. Uh, not just for FM, FMCG or anything. I think it helps a lot in general just tackling an interview. Uh, you know, being in that flow of um, approaching uh, an answer with a fixed structure. I think that helps a lot. And apart from uh, that, you have to get into revising concepts. Uh, I think FMCG, um, in I'm not sure about others, but they do test your core knowledge. Um, with respect to the background you're from, they expect you to know your major, uh, the subjects from your major course uh, pretty well. So for me, it was industrial, um, which means it had some supply chain courses as well. So I was asked some questions related to that. I think similarly, chemical, mechanical, people will be asked um, questions from their respective course. So um, I'm not sure if I can answer for them uh, about how to revise their concepts. I don't know the you know depth of those uh, subjects, but especially for industrial, I would suggest going through um, the basics. Uh, there is a course called Logistics and Supply Chain Management in uh, uh, in in before your CDC. I'm pretty sure you had it in third year, so I would highly recommend uh, revising that course. Especially, I think that also helps in structuring your answers a lot. And apart from that, yeah, I mean, whatever courses you are mentioning in your CV that you claim to have completed, I suggest that you know that well to you know answer questions in the interview others can add to this yeah so cherry can you tell us what you practiced to tackle this last moment anxiousness so i think there is some connection issue so jyoti aditya you can uh, okay so just continuing on the other point uh, for chemical engineering and mechanical engineering Generally, the subjects that you should be well versed with are uh, thermodynamics and heat transfer, maybe a bit of reaction engineering in case of chemical engineers, and all the courses that you mentioned and the coursework, the topics that you are most familiar with should be kept at the start. Okay, and they, uh, the interview surely asks for your favorite uh, topic that you would like to have the interview on, and they ask generally on that. So for the FMCG firms, <clears throat> since they are manufacturing based, so most important concept is re uh, relating thermodynamics and the process uh, flows, process flow diagrams, if you are familiar with that, they mo mostly comprise of certain kind of distillation or anything regarding that. So they may ask questions on that. Another thing I would like you to focus on is the key area relating the company. So it will differ from company to company, the initiative taken by the company, why do you want to join that particular firm? And tell me about yourself is also a very important aspect that you should be focusing on uh, before your interviews. And one thing that is the utmost importance is you should be well versed with your CV. You should be knowing each and every line what you wrote in your CV. Even if you are faking it, you should be like well familiar with all the things that you have written in your CV so that you are able to tackle the questions of the interview as well. And again, case study is very important as Nisara highlighted. 
so it would be good if you go to certain youtube uh, videos for hul uh, there are certain videos for the video test that the hul has so you can look upon that and you can also look upon some interview uh, interview stories for itc and png that you can get online again revise the basis for all the components and whatever you are speaking in during an interview you should have confidence in your answers and if you don't know something just accept your mistake politely or just say that you don't know they won't be judging you based on the things that you don't know but the things that you know would be more important for them that whatever you know you should know it like from the base everything should be covered properly so this would be the preparation strategy from my side uh, just make some subject notes on thermodynamics heat transfer and reaction engineering maybe for chemical engineers for mechanical again thermodynamics is important and they can also be asked regarding structures and mechanics i am not very sure about that that were really um, good suggestions yeah nisara yeah just one point i think shari is back on i didn't realize that uh, but uh, just one more point is that in in the last moment preparation strategies i would also suggest people to add uh, having a mock group discussion of um, some sort with your friends um, you know i think that is uh, i think that will help you build a little confidence also when you end up you know i i think you must have had like a huge gap between the last time you did a group discussion um to you know the first day you sit in cdc i would highly recommend doing that with your friends having uh, some sort of mock interview i know you cannot prepare for um the core stuff of an interview but um, i mean you can revise the concepts but not have like an in person interview but uh, what you can do is have a mock group discussion and have your friends um question you on your cv or some sort of personality questions so these things um, you know how how well a sec- third person is able to perceive your cv what sort of doubts are they getting from that you can be well prepared for that right so i suggest you to have that um, not not a lot of sessions just one or two will you know help you sort of realize the highlights of your cv and what part you know you know well or don't know well or have to go back and revisit so i think that will also be helpful shall you can go Yeah, okay uh, i hope my internet trouble didn't disturb you a lot i think nisra and jyotra did they have covered it mostly so i don't have anything to add okay so thank you all for the suggestions moving on okay so the next question is several students have questions to as as to how many profiles one should prepare are there any suggestions you would like to give cherry would you like to go first Uh, sure so as i mentioned i started out with all profiles and then i kept filtering them so according to me the ideal number should be around 2 to 3 profiles don't try to aim for a lot and don't try try to aim for too less uh, because fmcg firms take very select they are very selective and they take in very few people so you have to have some sort of backup option as well that would be my suggestion yeah um nasra would you like to go next yeah i think uh, cherry makes a valid point in saying that um, not too less and not too more when you're uh, deciding how many profiles to prepare for and i think this is where um, some level of self evaluation comes into play right um a lot of profiles like fmcg consulting have very very low selectivity and some sort of criteria that they look for so um just make sure does your profile fit with that sort of criteria um and you know uh, do you as a person fit well with that kind of work that they're offering so do that sort of self assessment and uh, decide on two to three profiles to focus on um i don't think you know you should be trying to manage a lot of profiles and you know ultimately not being able to uh, focus your energy well on any single one of them i think self assessment is very important here and i think similar to how we answered the question about deciding companies here also it depends on individual aspirations and um you know how you end up choosing profile so that is where i think you need to be self aware in that aspect yeah that makes sense um jyotira aditya would you like to start yeah, uh, some just to add on uh, most of the btech students that would be uh, in their third year into in the third year won't be much aware about how the profiles work or what work do their firm offer so they would be open to all profiles but i would uh, advise you sticking with two or three profiles 
that you are most familiar with or most confident of it should be a sweet spot having a backup is always a good strategy right so even if you don't want to enter a particular profile you should be giving the at least the pre interviews or the shortlisting process you should be filling for all the companies that is my advice like it gives you a perspective of how all the firms are taking the test beat the coding round for the software companies or the iq based test or the uh, personality based test for the fmcgs and similarly for other ml and other profiles that you have so it would give you a like what a perception regarding all the firms and it would be making you familiar with the work that they would be willing to get from you during your internship so that would be the point that would be adding on and uh, you can prepare for a particular profile and you can prepare for all profiles but two to three profiles is generally the sweet spot that we consider and focusing on a particular profile is also good but having a backup is a safe idea and regarding internship yeah that was really great and insightful so moving on to the next question students are frequently concerned about test cg so is there any cg criteria for fmgc profile uh, and nesada you want to what are your views on this um yeah i do think fmcg companies have a moderately stringent cg criteria when it comes to shortlisting because like i said they look for your caliber to pick up on things right and there is no other way to decide on that based on um, just your cv so i think cg is like a criteria that they consider i would say um 8 8.5 plus is a good number and 9 plus is definitely a, a, an amazing cg to have um 8 above is fine 8 above is fine definitely uh, i think that's the minimal for fmcg uh, and 8.5 plus is like a sweet spot for cg i think i am not sure about other um companies so jyoti raditya for itc i would say uh, 9 plus would definitely get you to the first round uh, cg shortlisting uh and also itc like focuses more on this since nesra told that there is no other parameter that you could be tested on right since you don't are not familiar with fmcg firms or the roles that they have to offer so they take cg as a parameter to take up things quickly another thing is even if you have a bit uh, cg on a bit lower side any academic achievement or any achievement regarding any, uh, any competition that you have participated current uh, recently that is a big plus point that i have seen like personally seen with some people who didn't have that much CG, high cg but had some of the other achievements in their cv that took them apart from the rest so cherry anything about your experience with cg uh, right just like jodra ditya said so your cv should balance out so in case your cg is a bit on the lower end if your academics and internships or pors balance that it's all right in case you don't have such good interns or pors if you have a higher cg maybe 9 plus that would be helpful and for png specifically having 8 plus cg is good okay so thank you for your suggestions moving on yeah so what significance does someone's personality have in the selection procedure jyotir aditya would you like to begin basically it would play a major role once you are selected for the company right so it should match with the value that the company has or the interests or areas that company needs to work upon so once your personality aligns with that of the company they surely select you so what all things you can focus on is you should be analyzing the situation well right if you are presented with a case study let's say you should analyze the whole case study what all uh, the things can be mentioned just make a note during the group discussion let's say so that would be very helpful in pro- giving a good impression to the interviewer or the moderator of the gd right if you keep, uh, let's say if you keep on shouting during gd that doesn't give a very good impression just putting your point or forcing your point to someone's face does not give a good impression at all you should be calm uh, keep a calm demeanor and analyze the situation well uh, listen 
listen to all the other panel members during a group discussion and then come up with your own points. So in my case, what happened is we were presented with a typical air crash case that many of you would be knowing. So what uh, happened is they give you turns. So basically in an online GD, what happens is they would be giving you turns to put on your point. So my turn was at the last. So I analyzed all my previous panelists so who were in the GD and then balancing both the sides. I came up with my own perspective on that and that helped me a lot. And two or three members who were constantly cutting each other that uh, they couldn't like get on to the next process, uh, selection process. So that I would tell you to avoid as much as you can. And you should be dictating the flow during an interview. That is like utmost important. So interviewer doesn't know and doesn't have many questions to come up with, right? He has to interview 10, 20 of students in one go. So he doesn't have that much a question bank and every time he would be asking you fresh questions. So he ex expects that you only come up with some topics that he can elaborate on or he can ask you questions on. So if you know how to dictate your interview or the flow of your interview, that is a very good point that I think you can have in your personality. And that also shows that you are aware of the things that you are familiar with. So that is all I guess regarding the personality. Yeah, that's nice. Um, Jerry, would you like to add something to this? Uh, sure. So I feel that personality is the major thing that FMCG firms are looking for because if at any point during the interview process they feel that if the personality does not match what they're looking for, they would not like to proceed with the interview or they would not like to take you. So personality is indeed very important, uh, especially at PNG we have something called PVP, Principle, Value and Purpose, which uh, what they do is they'll ask you situational questions and they are looking for how have you displayed those particular qualities through your answers and there is no exact way you can prepare yourself because your personality is something which takes a very longer duration to build right but uh, what you can do is you can go through those principles or you can uh, think about situations on a deeper level uh, also having an understanding of business and thinking from the company's perspective helps so that is what uh, what was something which helped me stood out in my particular interview that's nice. Um, Nesra, please do add some words. Sure. Um, so I think um, both of them have covered a lot of points in terms of how much value personality holds in terms of an FNCG intern. And um, I kid you not, every quality that they look for uh, in a candidate is directly, it can be directly translated to how um, your internship proceeds. Uh, because every quality is very useful in how you excel in that particular project that they assign you. For example, um, the ability to communicate well is so important when you end up in a factory where you're trying to make some sort of change uh, in a place where people are so used to going by the conventional methods. They are not all IITians who bring in fresh perspective, right? They're people who are doing, um, you know, routine tasks on a day-to-day -day basis. They're not open to changes. So how well can you go there, communicate to them, take all of their perspectives into consideration and get your work done? So these sort of challenges are presented to you during the internship and how well you can tackle is uh, the sort of personality that they're looking for. And here, another thing that also comes into play is how well are you able to explain what you know? I think that's a very important characteristic to keep in mind. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, let's say you're asked a question about your CV. Um, if you had to explain it to the most, uh, uh, you know, uh, the person at the lowest hierarchy in a factory, how would you do that? You know, it has to be in the most layman terms possible. So how well are you able to present your thoughts in a structured way? It covers everything, but is, is clear to every single person in the hierarchy, irrespective of the technical knowledge that they hold. So I think these are like things that you need to keep in mind uh, when you're attempting for an interview in FMCG firms. Um, like I, I think I've already also highlighted certain key characteristics that they already look for, communication, hardworking, resilient resilient is very important like i said people are not very open to changes in these traditional organizations these are organizations that have been running for hundreds of years so 
uh, when even ha- when you have to make like a small dent in their business you need to be very strong in your hypothesis what sort of backing you're giving to uh, you know that change that you want to make and how well you're taking their views into consideration so these characteristics matter a lot and how well you're able to bring out these sides of you in an interview is i think what at you know ultimately plays um in your favor or against your favor in an interview um that's about it yeah lots of good points so like we have discussed about group discussion so can you please try to elaborate how we can improve our personal interviews so cherry would you like to give us a insight on that right sure uh, so for uh, for acing interviews ensure that you are doing first of all you're very thorough with your cv you prepare all uh, prepare like short intros or short descriptions for whatever projects or internships you have written in your cv prepare a good intro right uh, next up uh, talking about technical knowledge brush up all your concepts or whatever courses you have written down whatever is your academic uh, course branch etc brush up concepts for that and be technically prepared and next up to com- uh, it's important to communicate whatever you are thinking right so have some mock interviews with your friends uh, have some group discussions with your friends and that will help you communicate your thoughts better which will help you in the interviews in the longer run yeah and what about kyoti aditya views of yours Okay, so I had been just letting you through my interview. So that was the first interview round was a mix of technical and HR. So uh, they started with asking the most basic question that most of the interviews have that tell me about yourself. So it should be very prepared. So whatever thing you are mentioning and tell me about yourself can be used against you or for you in your favor, right? so let's say you mention certain hobby like i mentioned that i like watching technical uh, youtube videos like regarding the tech stuff so they started asking me questions uh, for 5 to 10 minutes on that topic only like which is the your favorite tech youtuber what do you think is the difference between indian tech youtubers and the ones based in us or canada so this is how the interview flows right so during the hr round uh, it's like more beneficial this thing like how you control the flow or the dictate the flow of an interview regarding the technical interviews uh, they ask you generally uh, which is your strongest concept and they ask questions on that let's say you say a certain topic that you are well familiar with and well prepared but they come up with certain question that you are not well aware of so how to tackle that question and how to communicate it properly what is going on in your mind even if you don't know the final answer the process the workflow how you are arriving to that answer is very important for them they don't look that you are knowing everything they don't know want to know everything person they want a person who has the process to arrive to a solution for a problem since that would be the work that they would be assigning you during the internship so that is a major thing that you should focus on Okay, Nesara, any uh, views from your side? Um, I think pretty much it in terms of um, what how you can prepare for a personal interview. Additionally, I think um, I would highly recommend preparing HR questions well as well. Um, you know, you're trying to sell your personality and yourself ultimately in the interview, and uh, there are certain standard questions that everyone needs to know, and you know it's. it's the bare minimum if you miss out on these you're like missing out on very you know uh, low effort high impact questions that could have helped you in an interview uh that is those are questions about yourself and number 2 is research the company you're attempting for very very well like i said um, fmcg companies are looking for a culture fit and if you are the sort of person who hasn't even bothered researching their company the sort of rich culture they have uh, it shows very poor research on your part and very low interest from your end Uh, which is something not um, very you know well appreciated in these interviews so i think the basic question could be they could just be like you do you have any questions for us and i suggest that you prepare a question for them something that uh, could trigger a discussion with them have have like a very intellectually uh, you know stimulating conversation with them about their business or it could be as simple as you know just asking the interviewers um, how their day to day life looks like how how is their work evolved over the past years or 
um you might have noticed something um you know some sort of um shift in the company's business strategy or something like that how are they adapting to it you've always been curious about these things so these kind of questions um shows that you're interested and you've also it shows a certain level of research uh that you've done about the company i think um that also matters a lot but in terms of um personality hr did not spend a lot of time in delving deep into my personality my interests or hobbies or anything because they came with a strict time constraint of about 25 to 30 minutes per interview they had shortlisted very few uh, there were five short people shortlisted and a uh, fixed time for each of them and just one round of interview so a bit of time crunch that way so again there also it was important to um, you know explain things quickly in a more very crisp and concise way so that you're not wasting their time uh, that was also a very important um, thing to do in those interviews um yeah that's about it um they asked me questions about my cv um be very well prepared with the cv and um hr questions and about the company in itself this is very important for fmcg companies they value culture a lot yeah yeah so means just we have adding to that we uh, uh, just adding to that just go to the company website for once and just look in their initiatives and everything that they have done like it could take just one or two hours but would be very helpful during your interview since they would be asking why you would want to join our firm and why only our firm since you would be applying to many companies you can't be just saying that i applied for other companies also so i am applying for you that won't leave a good impression sir so you should be precise with your answers regarding the culture for that particular company right they would be very impressed and it is a very low effort question right you can have a good impact on them they would be impressed that you know about their company and their work culture and you are willing to align to that and they would be like you would be prioritized in terms of your candidature for the same so i think we should research about the company uh, we should be met on the pod just and... go through the company uh, website that would be more than enough i guess and if there is are certain initiatives that the companies are undertook just delve deeper into that con if you are willing to or you can make up your answers during the interview like uh, itc asked me why do you want to join an fmcg since i had projects on softwares in my cv so they told that you could be working in a multinational company a software company and living in a metropolitan city but in itc you get usually get tier 2 tier 3 cities so your friends would be uh working in metropolitan cities while you will be working here so how do you tackle that question without demeaning the company and taking out a positive impact of your working let's say so that is what they are looking for how do you figure out your answers right okay so that's was a great advice given for the personal interviews so now we go on Just, to the next session Yeah, yeah. One more point. Uh, yeah. I think he um, highlighted a good point about how you um, answer a question without demeaning the company itself. And I think another important factor is how do you highlight these things without demeaning your past experiences as well. How you talk about your past internships also um, gives them a hint about you know potentially how you're going to feel about their own company after that internship. So you cannot be like you know what I did these internships I did not like it. uh so i decided to try for fmcg that is not how it works you you can say that you know what you tried these things um these are the sort of uh, learnings that you derived from it and now you would like to apply it in an environment um that is offered in fmcg the sort of dynamic um uh, environment where you get to sort of improve your problem solving skills or anything of that sort so it's always important to present everything in a positive light that you know you had some key takeaways from it and how you going to um, use that learnings from here on i, I think that will also um, speak a lot about your personality as well in the interviews okay so we will take care of that point so coming on to the next session of our discussion we have gathered some question from our student that we thought were important to be included in this session also so let get to this questions right so uh, what is the skill set that the recruiter looks since the students and like what are the important skills that are essential for a good placement um would like any of the panelists like to take up this question uh 
Okay, I think um, this question has been answered repeatedly in our uh, past answers. I don't think in terms of technical skills, there is something particular we can pinpoint to saying this is a prerequisite for FMCG companies. Uh, but again, on the soft skill side, on your personality side, there are a lot of things to highlight on, and I, which I believe we already have uh, in terms of essentials um, uh, of you know soft skills. Um, but technical skills, like we said, uh, whatever you've done in the past, you just have to know it well, and you should have excelled in it. Uh, did it, you know, have, should have some sort of good learnings from it. I think that's all that matters because as we are sitting here, I think all three of us are from very different backgrounds. I don't think you can pinpoint to one particular technical skill that got us here. Uh, like Jyotiradhyaya said, he is from an SD background. Um, they could have easily penalized him for being from software and uh, you know, saying, you know, you, you might not be a good fit for FMCG, but that's not how it works. Uh, they're ultimately looking at your potential. So I don't think um, it's right of us to point to any technical skill as important, but soft skills, definitely. I think that is something you have to actively work on during your CDC preparation. Right, right. Thank you, Nesra. Um, Cherry, would you like to add something to this? Yeah, just like Nesra said, like, oh, for for skill sets, for technical skill set, just be thorough with whatever you've written on your CV and with your projects and internships. And for soft skills, be uh, communicate well. Uh, show how you know how you have made an impact through whatever work you have done. Uh, what what you brought to the table and what difference you made and uh, uh, show how you were resilient throughout whatever you have done. Yeah. Right. Um, Jyotir Aditya, please do add something to this. Surely they covered almost all points, uh, but if you're nitpicking uh, pertaining to SMCG, you can take up a course on Coursera regarding supply chain management just to get a know how of how the manufacturing industry actually works, what are the processes involved in a supply chain operation. But that may or may not be helpful for an internship as most of us don't know actually what is the work that is being allotted to us until it's allotted. So what is the case as ITC is that uh, they hire people from everywhere and they all have to reach Bangalore and then they are given their project fee. So anyone, uh, from any background could be given a project in another background as well. And it could be the same background. Since uh, I am working uh, at ITC for a firm, for a plant that is being set up right now. At the same time, my colleague is working in some other plant that is based on optimization of the process line. Another one is working on the same, uh, on some other plant that is regarding how to acquire customers. So, Everything would range from acquiring customers to knowing the process. So anything regarding that won't be much of a help for the technical in terms of technical skills that you need to know, especially for the FMCG, but on the soft skill side and how you present yourself. These two are the most important things, I would say. Yeah, um, thank you all for sharing your insights. So let's move on to the next question. So I think as we know, some company will be preferring core supply chain concepts. So are there any company that require in-depth knowledge of core supply chain concepts? Any of the panelists would like to start on this push? For ITC, it is not that hard and fast that they need to know every core concept, but it differs for departments, various departments. So ITC generally, what is the pattern is they take students from chemical, mechanical, electrical instrumentation, and from industrial as well. So what they ask is they have different job roles in their mind, the interviewers. Not necessarily it means that they would be be offering the same. They have different job roles in mind for different department students. So they would be asking questions regarding that. Uh, in my during my time, the mechanical students were asked questions regarding to core mechanical concepts and the subjects taught in their course. Whereas for the chemical students, it was more based on the projects that they did 
or any past experiences that they had and lesser on the core side so and for electrical also it was the same just like chemical a bit on the projects and other thing and lesser on the core side but for mechanical it was core completely core mostly the technical round was completely based on core uh, for the chemical and electrical they had like core and hr round in the first interview and the same for the second interview as well yeah cheri Uh, yeah right so i think uh, at least for png how it goes is they would ask questions majorly based on your cv and since my cv did not have any uh, electrical core or instrumentation core things written on it they did not ask me anything about core and i think you know just my cgpa and some academic uh, details would display that i have decent knowledge about core so that was enough for them yeah nisra something from your side Oh uh, right. Um, I think um, as mentioned earlier, I think going through basics of supply chain concepts is, I think, a good start. Especially because I said HUL has that video interview round where um, cases can get slightly specific for us for a person who is not at all proficient with supply chain concepts. You know, um, for example, um, the question was about let's say um, strategizing market entry of some product. um into india some product description is there in terms of its price point or anything of that sort uh but if 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 for the first time when you hear it it seems like a very complicated case but there are certain basic supply chain concepts you can apply to prioritize exactly how you're going to strategize its entry in india uh depending on you know what sort of demographic it's selling to um uh, what sort of price point it lies at uh what sort of um you know manufacturing uh it needs and what sort of manufacturing um uh, strategy the company is considering things like that um i mean this is a very crude way to put it what i'm saying is you uh, going through basics of supply chain can help you uh, frame these answers pretty well with the right jargons and uh, right structure the value chain of how uh, you know supply chain works uh, you 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 know from right from raw materials to you know even the demand planning and everything so all of these factors influence uh, answering a question like that so i think that will definitely help uh apart from that um yeah again like they mentioned uh cv related questions will come up so whatever you mentioned in cv you need to know thoroughly and for me i had some things about especially because my background itself is industrial engineering which ha- which has supply chain as a main uh, course and number 2 i had something else also um related to supply chain in my cv so questions were asked about this and they asked me what our approach was and had some follow up questions um about the same so i had to know those concepts well at least so if you're not from industrial background i think just knowing little basics and knowing your core pretty well or your cv stuff pretty well should be enough uh, but for industrial students i would suggest going through logistics and supply chain management because that is your core and it is preferable that you know it pretty well yeah thank you for clearing up any confusion regarding to this question moving on yeah so many of us are taking online courses so is it worthwhile to include these courses on our resumes would any of the panelists like to answer this question in terms of online courses i think um two things that you have to consider um does do these courses align with the profile that you are applying for because a lot of times i've seen people writing the randomest courses in their cv and it not being relevant at all to the internship they're applying to you're just you know making things harder for yourself by mentioning things that are not relevant you know um questions about that will just be relevant in the interview so uh, right to the point course was that are very relevant to the internship you're applying to uh and you know yeah so, like we said the supply chain basics and all those are courses that can be done but otherwise um i don't think especially for fmcg there are any other online courses that needs to be mentioned but uh, if you happen to have a background in other things other um, areas such as let's say ml or sd and there are some courses that you've done that are supporting that part of your cv that you know what i have some knowledge i've done some coursework in this especially for i think people who are just completing their second year 
um i think it's a little different for dual degree people who've gotten an extra year to sort of maybe do another internship or anything but at the end of second year a lot of students don't have a lot of things to write on their cv so in that case courses will be helpful only if it's aligning well with the other aspects of your cv and it's you know directly related to that don't just randomly write every online course that you've done on the cv prioritize what you're going to write and know those topics very well it's always better to write two three courses that uh, that you know very well um rather than writing 10 courses that you know partially here and there that is my advice in terms of online courses yeah that was great um jyotir aditya would you like to say something yeah i would be i agree i agree in the same points just the uh, one thing that i can add is if you want uh, like if you are let's say preparing for software or ml roles and you have done some courses so in my interview what happened is they saw that i had done image processing and it was mentioned in my cv so they asked like how would you make out a defect in an assembly line process when the product is finally packed so you would be knowing certain things like how can you detect the errors or anything they wanted a simple answer they wanted just wanted the answer that it should be a high speed motion camera that would be capturing the images but i took i knowingly asked them some time i figured out a whole flow chart since it was the strong part of mine i figured out a whole flow chart and then explained everything to them in layman terms so that can be a thing that you can add to your interview skills right since let's say you are not very familiar with the core concepts and you don't have much uh let's say familiarity with the core concepts and you are not much confident on those concepts but at the same time you have done other courses that may or may not align with uh, the company itself but you are more familiar with so try to deviate the interview in some or the other way that can be put to use for the fmcg firms let's say you uh, you are an ml enthusiast but you have applied for an fmcg you have a good cg and you are selected for the final interview you can add certain points like how would you automate the whole machine line so that adds value to that company right at the same time you are showing off your major skill that you are more confident on so this would be an advice that you can consider right um cherry would you want to say something else yeah sure uh so for for me i believe that uh, let's say you have a bullet point that you want to add in your por versus the question is uh, do i write some courses which i have done so i would suggest that courses are always secondary always write try to add things which would add more impact so try to add things which would add value to the cv but now coming to the question of courses uh any course which shows that you have put in effort or aligns with the fmcg brand would do um for me i did not do courses which aligned with fmcg as such but i did write some certifications which i had pursued on coursera they these were like 8 to 10 courses long certifications so i added these because it showed that how much effort i had put in for a particular thing and uh and it goes on to align with other personality traits which was uh, which i was portraying so this is how you can come to a decision uh don't write anything which you are not thorough with because that will only create a, a negative effect yeah right um so um thank you for like clearing up any confusion on this question now we should be taking up questions from the audience so we encourage them to like write down all the questions in the chat box Uh, there is one question i guess in the chat box uh, asked by madhiha what about manufacturing we don't have thermo so basically they won't be asking things that you don't know right they don't want to know how uh, know everything person that knows every concept be it in his field or an other field so they would be asking only the things that you are supposed to know or you know they would be playing on your strength and it is uh, to you how you play on your strength and dictate the flow of interview to the things that you are more familiar with um 
mí esta luz. Are there any more questions anyone would like to put up? Um, there's a question by Ritik. So what kind of supply chain work um, will we guys be doing in our internship? Um, I can start. Uh, I think uh, especially, I, I mean, others can answer what kind of internships they're doing, but especially for me, uh, uh, my internship involves um, optimizing cert this, this particular process in a manufacturing plant actually two parts to it number one is uh actually benchmarking exactly how other sites in the firm are doing the same process what are the best practices uh, involved in this process and um how to reduce the time taken for it and um use those learnings and potentially create an impact in the process happening at the site i'm at i can't give out a lot of information because uh, we cannot share a lot of things about the projects that we're doing but um that is how I would summarize it. I'm basically supposed to benchmark this particular process, figure out um, the best practices to reduce the time taken for it, and apply those learnings in a particular site that I'm assigned to, because um, the process there is kind of inefficient right now, and I have to look for ways to optimize it, uh, both with learnings from other sites and uh, some innovative perspective from my end as well. That That is how I would summarize my work. It's it's on purely on the manufacturing side. Nice. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Um, um, how much knowledge of optimization matters? Again, it would vary from the process that you are like working upon, right? So there is no specific set of rules like this way you should have to optimize things. It would vary on the process and the material that the company is manufacturing and you are supposed to work upon, right? So it may include some intermediate process or the final packaging that could optimize the whole process itself. Uh, certain other ways that you can implement to reduce the time taken for a particular uh, unit operation these all things would matter for optimization uh, there is nothing as such a specified set of rules for that yeah, I also think just by like, question oh, i'm so sorry <laughs> no, no i I, I was just a little confused about the question I, i'm not sure if by knowledge of optimization you mean the uh, mathematical op uh, aspect of optimization or the process optimization because they're two different things. Uh, when I mentioned I'm supposed to let's say optimize the process in the manufacturing setting, it involves a lot more factors in terms of uh, the machineries, the human aspect of it, uh, the methodologies that they're using or the tools they're using, things like that. Um, that's just a small clarification. It was not the mathematical optimization topic that I was referring to if that is what the question was about. But uh, if you're from an industrial background, I would recommend that you revise that topic as well a little, simply because it's in our depth and it's, it's yeah, it's good to know that. I'm so sorry. I, I just wanted to clarify this because I wasn't sure exactly what that question was directed to. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So if there are no more questions, are there any fun days you would like to give to CDC Janta? Yeah, I'd like to mention a couple things. Uh, firstly, something more on the mindset, uh, which which helped me uh, deal through CDC last year was uh, I thought of CDC internship process as more of an experience rather than a goal to achieve. So think if you think of it that way, it might help you. My thought process was, OK, if I don't get a CDC intern this time, maybe I'll try for off campus. If I don't get off campus, maybe I'll convert to dual. So that sort of helped me uh, take away from the goal of achieving and that reduce the pressure and help me. And uh, the other thing I'd suggest is to keep your friends and family close. So 
uh, make groups with your friends, have mock interviews, talk about things, have rant, rant sessions if you want, and, and uh, keep uh, uh, keep in touch with your seniors also. Keep taking advices and guidance from them. And uh, since our process was virtual, so we had to rely on family a lot to keep us grounded and <laughs> to help us keep sane. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those those would be my advices. Yeah, um, Jyotir Aditya, would you want to say something? Uh, yeah, say just put it beautifully. Just I would like to add that rejections would be a part of the process. So don't get disheartened by the rejections. There would surely be a lot of rejections and a very few selections. But those sel a few selections that you have to convert, right? Uh, have rant sessions with your friend. That helps a lot. Also keep a check on your friends at the same time. And it, if possible, have group discussions if your friend is preparing for the same profile or even a different profile you can exchange knowledge and have a proper time schedule since the cdc tests vary from mornings to late night like so having a proper sleeping schedule helps a lot uh, have a proper diet that would be on the health side and at the same time, don't take too much pressure. It's just an internship process. Take it as an experience, as Cherry told. Even if you don't get a campus uh, on-campus opportunity, there are several off-campus opportunities that you can apply. Yeah, um, Jyotir, nice to hear from you. Would you want to say something? Yeah, I think both of them have covered the excellent points in terms of what the CDC internship you know, I mean, it. I think it seems like a very scary word for juniors, but it really is not the end of the world. It's. I mean, I think it gets very easy to get caught up in the competitiveness of CDC internship. You know, because everyone around you is doing it, uh, and you know, it's you have to get day one, day two, things like that. But I, I really don't think it's worth that um, level of stress or anything. Uh, definitely, having a support group among your friends helps a lot. Mm, yeah, especially if it's people who are preparing for the same profiles, um, you know, just discussing um, your ongoing process with them, uh, getting feedback on, let's say, you could have done something in one test, how can you improve yourself in the other one? How was their approach for something? You know, these things, um, knowledge sharing in, in all aspects, I think helps a lot, uh, as well as keeping you sane. I think don't do not isolate yourself during CDC internship process. Uh, have people close to you and keep talking to them um, like Cherry said even seniors I think I, I for that matter any of us like you know contact us anytime um, we'd be happy to help you out guide you through the process um, and yeah um, stay healthy during the process and sleep well and everything it, it gets very easy to screw up your sleep schedules and everything don't do that it's not that worth it um, but yeah ultimately uh, give your best in terms of preparation and don't be too disheartened because uh, one thing that you have to consider is the randomness of this whole process. You cannot uh, eliminate randomness from it and you never know what the company is expecting, what their business needs are, what kind of candidates they're looking for. So even if you give 100%, sometimes it's just not your day. Sometimes, you know, their requirements are just different and you didn't fit it well and it's not at all your fault. So there's only so much one can prepare and just I would just suggest that you know you give your best in that aspect and do not worry a lot about the results um that is about it yeah that was very enlightening thank you all so I think no session is completed without one day so that was really helpful and enlightening as we conclude today's panel discussion I want to thank Nisara, Cherry and Jyoti Aditya for sharing their experiences and providing us with a valuable advice. They have provided us with some very fantastic foundations as well as essential recommendations for acing the upcoming CDC uh, internships. This conversation I feel will undoubtedly assist some student preparing for the FMCG profile. It was a pleasure to have you all on our panel today. I'd also want to thank our audience for the assistance in making this conversation a success. You have all been quite engaging and active. Now, as FMCG sessions come to an end, I would like to tell you that one more amazing session like this await you at 7 o'clock on Finance Profile. That session covers all the detail and is a must watch for anyone who is preparing for finance. Thank, for, thank you once again for joining in today and have a nice evening. Thank you, everyone.